You know, flashlight is really serious when it comes with a carry case like this. Trustfire T90R. Let's check it out. Let's check out this serious flashlight, but you don't want to see this. You want to see this, the actual flashlight. Welcome back to Quentin Tindy Gun Guy. This is the Trustfire T90R, direct competition with the Eminent UT90. Similar specs, similar size, similar name. There's so many similarities, but this is from Trust Fund. With a price tag of 4,200 Rand from Torch SA, this was sent to me to test and to see what I think about this flashlight. Still very new to the market. I don't think there is another review on YouTube just yet. 4,800 lumens, so you scoff at that. 4,800 lumens, that's basically nothing. I've got a little imminent. LD70 that pushes out 4,000. Ah, but the difference is that with a size like this, with a reflector that big, it's going to have an insane amount of candelas. And you are absolutely correct. This is a beast of a flashlight. And if worst case, worst case scenario comes and you need to defend yourself, you can either use it as a lightsaber with a beam that comes out of this, or you can use it just to knock someone like Thor's hammer. I said it with the Imolent as well, the UT90. It feels like Thor's hammer. We just, you, you can feel the power and I freaking love it. But let's have a closer look. Close up time. This is the packaging that you get it in. It is ridiculous. Nice and hard plastic. Three year warranty. Rechargeable. Um, interesting thing is that it takes a battery back and it takes two 21700 batteries, which is brilliant. 4,800 lumens, 1,600 meters throw, uh, 640,000 candelas, which is ridiculous. IP68, 112 hours runtime, not on max, but we'll get to that now. And one meter drop tester. That's the super exciting bit. Now let's get to what you actually get inside. This is the back packaging that it comes in. Very, very neat. This is a manual that's always boring for us guys. <laughs> Moving on, this is the flashlight. As you can see, it's an absolute beast. With the flashlight, you get a gun mount, which is magnetic. Uh, let me just get something that's magnetic or metallic. Fox knives dot, as you can see, it holds on to that and it's a really strong bond. But we're gonna test that later when we get to actually shooting with this flashlight on a firearm. Cool thing about this mount is that it doesn't come with a space on top, it only comes with a space on the bottom. So it comes with a couple of different thickness of these spaces so you can decide what flashlight you can use it with so you don't have to use it with this flashlight you can use it with other flashlights as well so that's the mount sorted next up is going to be the pressure switch great thing about this pressure switch is that it's got dual function it has momentary on we press and hold here and then it has a click button where you can switch it on and switch it off for permanent on and off Little lanyard that you can attach to the flashlight and a top C USB charger, which is very, very important. But we'll get to the flashlight part of this now. Top C USB, let's just clean this shot up a little bit more. Okay, top C USB charger that goes in here. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Don't mess up my shot. Um, type C USB charger which goes, which goes in here. I really like that function, but I'll do another video, especially on this, where it's so nice just using a Type C USB charger and not always that great using the magnetic ones. Dual switch. So this is basically an overgrown T11R or T21R. Um, if you haven't checked out my reviews on those, check it out now. For comparison's sake, this is an MC3 flashlight. Check that size difference. This is ridiculous. Rear button activates it, and the front button runs it through its cycles. And it's going to have different cycles running through. As you can see, there it's a green, so it does have a battery indicator. Green means that it's between 50% and 100%. Uh, yellow it goes to 50% to 20%. Red 20% to 5% and flashing red 
is going to take it from 5% to 1% where it's going to die on you. Not ideal. Check how deep that reflector is. That is absolutely ridiculously deep, which means that it's going to have an insane hotspot. Nice heat sinks here, which is in line with the LED on the inside, which is very important for cooling. Let's take off the tail cap so I can show you guys what's happening inside. As stated, it does come with a battery pack which is awesome or you can use two 21 700s where on the other flashlights if you don't have the battery pack you are stuffed where this one you can use the two 21 700s if this battery pack because it does have a limited lifetime you can just replace it very very nice flashlights and as you can see an absolute beast Some beam shots here is the lowest setting of this flashlight it's going to be 35 lumens. You can maintain this for 112 hours. We're going to bump it up 350 lumens, 26 hours, 1,200 lumens for 4.2 hours, and 4,800 lumens for 100 hours. This is insanity. Let's move it up. Um, as you can see, there's my dog. I don't want to blind him. Um, that's about 20 meters. That's 30 meters. Or 20 meters, 25 meters, sorry. Up until that wall, that's going to be 30 meters. Up until the furthest wall, that's 40 meters. As you can see, this is freaking insane. Insane hotspot, insane throw. And it's almost, almost looks like a lightsaber. How crazy is that? Absolute. And that was the beam shots. As you can see, this is an excellent search light with that hotspot and a bit of throw on the side, which means that you can identify very nicely and still identify colors as well. So the Candelas isn't washing out all of the color, making a white out. Let's address the elephant in the room. As you can see on the packaging of this flashlight, it says that it's a tactical flashlight. Now that's a trigger word for me, as it is with most people in the industry, but not for the reason that you actually think. Tactical, if something says tactical, I'm going to through, put it through its paces. I'm going to try and break it. Or well, not entirely, just use real world testing, real world scenarios with a flashlight. Uh, as you saw in the T21R test, as you saw in the T4 test. Shame, the T4 test, that was ridiculous. I really abused that flashlight. So if you haven't seen that yet, please check it out. It's about a couple of videos back. I think it's about two, two videos back, they're about... Check that out now um, and see how much abuse that I put that trust file through. Let's be honest, the only thing tactical about this flashlight is the tail switch that you can switch it on and switch it off with. That's about it. I wouldn't put it in the tactical flashlight range because I can promise you, if I tested this like a tactical flashlight like I usually do, I'm not too sure that it would have survived. Though, Yes, I think that calling it a tactical flashlight isn't fair to this flashlight because I don't think that's its intended purpose. I think this was intended to be a searchlight and a hunting light. Um, so let's check out if it survived me shooting with it now. Okay, so as you can see, it survived that test. Now, when I do a shooting test with a weapon mounted light, there's a couple of things that I look for. Number one is retention. So the mount or mounting system that the flashlight uses, it needs to retain the flashlight and its position on the forearm, which this actually did. I did have a problem with the Brunite flashlights mounting that weren't as good as this one is. Um, great thing about this is that it does, that it does have a rubber protective layer that's not going to scratch up your barrel because if you like if you are like me then you look after your firearms so using something that doesn't have a protective layer 
is going to scratch it up um, especially with high recoiling rifles where it might slip but this actually doesn't the bat uh, batteries the magnets on this is insanely insanely strong and it did last number two is what i look for is flickering so as you take a recoil what's going to happen to the flashlight does it have a bit of a flicker so what i did with this is i skipped all of the other firearms that i usually tested with i went straight to the shotgun because if it survives on a shotgun it's probably going to su survive most other things um Thing that, that makes more sense to me is using this on a shotgun and maybe if you shoot slugs or anything like that short distance kind of stuff because if i use this on my big rifles i'm going to mess around with the resonance of the of the barrel so my zero point is going to have a different point of impact which i do not want except for if you maybe sight it in with this flashlight check it out maybe it doesn't affect your rifle i haven't tested that out yet um, comment down in the comment section if I need to test out if mounting a flashlight changes your point of impact on your rifle. I suspect that it will. Moving on back to the flashlight, it did survive the testing um, part of it as a weapon mount light, which is absolutely brilliant because I think that fits the purpose more with this flashlight. I know some people mount it on the scope. I like to mount it on the barrel um yeah i'm just not too sure yeah it's probably fine on this on the scope mount anyway <laughs> moving on back to the flashlight so this is as you would expect in the segment of this range of flashlights aircraft grade aluminium hot anodizing as you would expect um, it feels super solid grip on this is really really nice it's actually better than the imminent um, ut90 for me personally because it does actually have a grip it's not just a smooth surface but this isn't a shootout video also comment down in the comment section if you want to see a ooh, <laughs> almost dropped it if you want to see well it should survive it's a <laughs> yes it's going to still work um want me to drop test it remember um uh, if you want to see a shootout between the ut90 and this flashlight i think that should be an interesting comparison knowing that the specs are so close to the same yeah anyway great value for money i would say 4200 rand this is a very specialized part of this segment it's not like an everyday carry flashlight that the broad spectrum of most people use in the everyday carry community this I would say is more like a searchlight kind of thing. This is very nice for patrols. Um, I have used this on patrols with the neighborhood watch. Very, very nice flashlight for that intended purpose. Because you can vary the power of this flashlight as well, it can last a very long time, um, as I stated in the in the beam shots video. So if you need a bit more power, you do have the, the ability to bump up and then identify whatever you want to identify whether it's very close you want to light it up maybe blind someone that that's busy with things that they shouldn't be busy with or illuminate something that's really far away i wouldn't say that this can reach out to 1.6 k's it probably can in perfect conditions but yeah i'm not too sure but a kilometer yeah i think this this will probably easily make that very nice flashlight um, as i stated very specialized and then it's just grippy everywhere. Um, the front button is grippy, the back button is grippy. Why is that important? Because you can identify where the button is in complete darkness. But if you switch it on anyway, it's gonna give you a green light and you are able to identify it. But usually with using flashlights like this, you wanna find the button as soon as possible and not try and look for it. So as you are identifying, you can just activate it, feel where the button is and then bump up the candelas and the lumens on this flashlight come down in the comment section what do you think of these big flashlights like this more geared towards the premium side of the market absolutely love it and i love the carry case that it comes in and all the accessories that it comes in as well like share subscribe all those cool things and a massive thanks to torch sa for sending me this to test it out i'll see you guys later cheers